Back again with a review, this time on the Ruger LCR Chambered in 357 Magnum. Real quick safety check. Open. Empty. That's it. So, this little guy is awesome. Great, 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 great concealed carry piece. With a few caveats. Not so much because of this gun in particular, just again, the nature of revolvers. And I'm, I'm going to have to just do a video specifically on the whole semi-auto versus revolver issue. But for now, pertaining to this in particular, this is a great, great revolver. Again, we're empty here, and I can dry fire this safely. But the trigger pull on this, especially for a double action revolver, is just great. It's very smooth. Of course, it's long being a double action revolver, but it is so smooth and really not that heavy. We're talking maybe six pounds I think I mean this is this is nice enough that I mean I've had some female shooters that handle this and they usually don't like double action pulls at all they, it's too much I can't. they sometimes physically can't pull the trigger sorry not trying to be sexist just a fact but this one no complaints as far as the trigger pull uh, the size is wonderful I mean it's very compact fits the hand great this is a, a hogue handle type or not handle but it's a hogue tamer grip I should say I'm getting confused with their slip-on grips this is an excellent excellent grip and it was of course made with this gun specifically in mind this is their default grip they have a uh, well, not laser max um, I forget what brand but there's a laser grip that they have and it's more of a hard rubber with a laser along the slide here and you know that one doesn't work as well as far as taming recoil uh, this one, great, great feel. I love the finger grooves that they have on here. It's just very organic, just like a, that whole piece of clay molded to your hand kind of feel. And typically, I don't like having my pinky hanging off here, but the way this is shaped, I mean, if you see how this has even got kind of a, a reverse curve, it's really just made to have your pinky tuck under there. And it's still, you don't feel like your pinky's hanging off in space. It feels like you're still getting some grip back there. So it's, it's very comfortable, and it hides because this, again, as I always say, the grip is the hardest part to hide. You're dealing with a really short grip. This is, there's hardly anything sticking out. So easy to conceal. This is one of the few things I would consider uh, for pocket carry, really. Um, that's famous, you know, snubby revolvers have always been known for as pocket pistols. They're not really pistols, it's a kind of a misnomer, but... They are excellent little pocket carry items, and especially this was made with that in mind because you have this very smooth back strap. There's no external hammer. This is all internal, and Ruger has a patented special mechanism for their trigger. This is not a typical, just a shrouded hammer. This is something entirely different. It has involved some cams and some, I don't know, some engineering terms I don't even understand because I'm just kind of simple. <laughs> but this is just a very compact, sleek little package, and it weighs hardly anything. I mean, this is the 357 model with the steel frame. I believe it's stainless steel. It's coated with some kind of a nitride something or other unobtainium whatever material. And the uh, the cylinder is also stainless steel and it is also coated with some kind of anti-corrosion uh, sort of anti-glare finish on there. And I have not had a single problem with rust on the frame or this. The front sight, however, is just blued steel and that's the only thing I've ever had rust on this and that was weird because I was carrying this for about a week earlier this year um, just non-stop because I was out of state and traveling and of course this is just if you're carrying long distances this is really nice to have as far as a uh, compact carry piece and this front side just started turning orange and I don't, I don't understand why because I have a perfectly sealed uh, holster has never had any issues before and that was the only thing but other than that I mean I've had the whole back end even part of the uh, cylinder I've had it just coated in sweat just drenched you know hot summer days in Arizona not a problem no rust I mean, you can't make polymer rust obviously but even this this steel portion here no problems um, sorry I got on a sidetrack there but I was talking about weight the weight of this, the 357 model, is a little heavier than the 38 Plus P, which is lighter. However, even if you don't plan on shooting 357 Magnum out of this, either at the range or as a carry option, that helps. It's not enough to notice as you carry it, and it's not enough to be a problem, but it does help tame the recoil a little bit more. And that's 
I'm getting on the, uh, the minuses here a little bit already. But yeah, one of the minuses on this, because it is so light, and you are shooting, you know, either 357 Magnum here, this would be uh, Hornady Critical Defense. If you're going to shoot out of a short barrel, this would be something I would go with, because this is optimized for short barrels. Or 38 Special Plus P, this is Spear Gold Dot, and this is also optimized for short barrel applications, specifically for these kind of things. Um, you talk about the recoil of these, it, you feel it. I mean, 38 standard pressure, not bad. It's it's poppy, but it's not bad. 38 plus P, barely any different. 357, wow, yeah. You put about two, three rounds to this, you put a cylinder full, you're done. That's it. You just, all right, I'm out. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not anything I would remotely call pleasant. It's not uncontrollable. It's not like you pull the trigger and it goes flying out of your hands. It's just downright unpleasant. It stings. It'll bite you. And even with this very squishy, nice, comfortable, well-formed, well-made grip, eh, it's just physics. You know, it's it's inertia and mass and all those other terms. <laughs> it's that's just how it is. So, uh, female shooters or people sensitive recoil in general. Uh, really turned off a lot of the time by the heavy recoil, especially with 357. 38 standard pressure, yeah, it recoils less, but if you're using it for defense, you're going to want 38 plus P. And that one, it, you know, it might might turn some people off from it. Just one of those things you want to either borrow from a friend or rent one at the range to find out just how how well you feel about the recoil on this. It's subjective. Me, I'm okay with it. Um, as long as it's 38. 357, I would say this feels just about on par with the Caltech PF9 that I had. And that was just, I don't know. It, it really did not agree with me. Uh, just, it stings. So, I'm a wuss, I know. <laughs> so, there's the uh, recoil. The awkward reload on this also is another thing. Um, uh, you know, and getting into the whole revolvers versus semi-auto deals, Re reloads on any revolver are going to be tricky. You're really going to have to practice at them. But even so, the way this is made, this grip, this wonderful squishy hogue grip, gets in the way of things. When you're ejecting your spent shell casings, um, i got a live round here, but I'm not chambering it per se. But when you eject them, a lot of the time it'll hang up on this, this grip right here. It just kind of sticks out just enough to where it kind of drags on there so you'll you'll poke out the first three and then you'll have to turn the cylinder and then stick them out the rest of the way it doesn't always happen but sometimes it does it's just very annoying so i would not really carry this with the idea that you're going to get into some kind of a heated gun battle or use this as a competition pistol or anything like that where you're going to do so many fast reloads this i would say would be something to carry for a low risk kind of um, say you're just walking around your neighborhood and you don't live in that bad of a neighborhood, but you want something against like dogs or maybe the uh, random mugger kind of thing. But I wouldn't go carrying this in like downtown Phoenix where you're going to be up against game bangers and groups and that kind of thing. So more for a low risk, um, better than nothing kind of thing. And it's very effective. Again, 357, 38 plus P, great cartridges. Um, but reloads, you're only going to have five shots. That's all you got in this. Five and done. Your reloads are awkward, slow. I don't care how much you practice this in particular, you know, with the grip and everything. It's just, it's very, very hard to get quick with this. Not impossible, just for the average person, it's not going to happen. So are you either going to want to carry multiples? Um, they've got Ruger LCRs chambered in 22 long rifle, 22 Magnum, 38 plus P. You know, if you want to carry a 137, 138, or one in 22 mag, or whatever, or if you want to carry a J-frame, or whatever, some other gun in addition to this, or what I would be more up to do is carry this as a backup to something else. This isn't something I carry as concealed carry, because this is a big honking six-inch model, the GP100, which also is unloaded. Safety sallies. But it's a great backup piece, but as a standalone, eh, not so much. Um, it does have a simple manual of arms about it. Uh, the only maybe different thing would be the cylinder release, because a lot of Smith & Wessons and such, as I mentioned with the GP100, uh, you push forward to release the cylinder, or on Colts you pull back. But this one, Ruger likes you to pull, push the 
release in and then push the cylinder out. So you have to push in instead of pushing forward or pulling back. Not a bad thing, but yeah, other than that, manual arms, bolt out, put your finger on the trigger, aim, shoot. It's, it's very simple for somebody that doesn't train a lot. Say you've got a uh, girlfriend that wants or needs to carry concealed, this would be something to consider. Um, or for a home defense piece, I mean, anything you can do with concealed carry, you can generally do as a home defense. And so if you wanted a jack of all trades kind of gun, this would work for that. You can use this for home defense quite well. You know, stick it in your nightstand, load it with some 38 plus P, keep it next to a flashlight, you got a good piece. So, that's uh, not really a grip, it's more of an advantage, but just saying. The grabbiness of this grip, it's a very soft, sticky rubber, which feels great, but if you're carrying this concealed and you have a, a cover garment, like a shirt, t-shirt, whatever, it kind of grabs the material a little bit, so depending on where you carry it and how you carry it, it might hang up on you, you might be kind of getting self-conscious about, you know, constantly checking your shirt and make sure it's not riding up and then getting hung up on the butt of the gun there. But just something to note there. A lot of the other guns, they got a hard rubber kind of grip, and again, this is also available with that laser grip. Uh, it's a harder rubber, and that won't have that problem. So, eh, just something to consider. It's not a huge thing. And one other thing, it's, it's kind of more along the lines of snubbies in general, but 357 Magnum out of a snubby, even though this is made specifically for 357 um, snubbies, it's pointless, really. And you're getting a lot and a lot. I'm talking a huge difference in recoil. A lot of recoil, a lot of flash, a lot of noise, and ballistically, it's not much better than this. This is 38 plus P again. I don't, I don't see the advantage. Other than the macho factor, that's all you're getting with this. So really, get the 357 Magnum if you want something with a tad less recoil than the 38 model, but carry 38 in it. Don't mess with the 357, honestly. It's just not worth it. You don't gain anything. So that's it. Um, great little carry piece, great backup gun, and home defense, whatever you might use it for. So there you have it. For what it's worth, that's my two cents on that. Thanks for watching.